Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Sierra West, but before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goose, you know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to the Sierra Mountain Range in the American West where players have come with that pioneer spirit to make their fortunes in one of four different modules that you can add to the game. Every time you play, before you get started, you're going to decide whether it's harvest season, which means we're trying to collect a communal uh, crop of apples, and this gets added over here as an extra scoring metric, or whether it's time to go fishing, in which case this gets added and extends the board, and players can actually use their canoes to go catching lots of delicious fish, or instead of catching fish, we can catch outlaws, banditos who are wanted dead or alive. We can even become the sheriff uh, if we're playing with the Rootin' Tootin' expansion. But today, I'm actually doing the uh, fourth module, which is the Gold Rust module, which means gold has the potential to be worth three times the number of points as it normally would be while we try to fill up our mine carts with gold and uh, try to basically go mining and not end up with just lots of useless stone uh, during the mining action. So, no matter which mode you choose, the, after you've made your choice, you get a deck of cards that represents the Sierra Mountain here. And you take it, and each of the modes has like a different way that you set it up. I've already gone ahead and set this up, and there you can see there's one, two, three, four, five special cards that when they are revealed will get automatically added down here to the progress track. Okay, so if I were doing the uh, fishing one, you can say, oh, I could actually go fishing by spending resources and do various and sundry things. But I've already set up the mountain with the Gold Rush cards, and each player gets a starting hand, a uh, starting deck of cards. You can see I'm the green player, so I've got all my green cards, and one of them is added to your deck that's tied to the module. So here's my special gold mining card. Instead of, oh, where, uh, instead of, say, my special fish catching card if I were playing the river one, or uh, my apple orchard card if we were playing the harvest. Season. So anyway, I gotta shuffle up my deck of cards, and I start with a hand of one, two, three. So that's what I'm gonna be using um, as I try to uh, find gold. Okay, and today I should say I am actually gonna be playing Sierra West solo, uh, which means I'll be going up against Hastings over here. This is a special deck of cards that emulates what another human player would be able to do as we vie for the limited resources of the mountain. And as part of setup, Hastings has the four basic traps set out to catch various animals. I've got five. I've got the four basics plus the one special one that is associated with the mining module. And I can see, randomly drawn from Hastings' deck, that on his first turn, he's going to try and build, and then he's going to try and climb to the top of the mountain, then he's going to work his way up the rail track, and then he's going to try and build again. Now, I don't know exactly what he's going to do. He's only going to do three of these four, and so I can kind of anticipate what Hastings is going to be up to, but I can't be 100% certain. So we'll see what he's going to do on his turn, but right now, I'm the first player. It is my turn, and on my turn, first I plan, then I pioneer, and then I pass. When it's not my turn, I can go tracking and trapping, potentially, if the opportunity arises. So anyway, I got my start in hand of three cards, and I have to do some planning. Let's see, I did not get my mining card, because there'd be uh, mine cart actions here, and, uh, and you know there'd be the icon for it. So these are three standard cards. And there's a few things to bear in mind. When I play these cards, I give my opponents the potential opportunity to trap rabbits or beaver. And in fact, looking over at Hastings, I can see that he's looking to try to trap Beaver right now, um, which means I got to be careful about how I play this card because I don't want to give him that opportunity. Since his card says he favors the right side of the mountain, that means I do not want to play this Beaver, this card that has Beaver trapping options for him. 
into my right slot. Because then that means he will have Trap Beaver, which is a opportunity to get resources for the rest of the game. So, I, or more to the... Actually, for me, it's an opportunity to get resources. For him, it's an opportunity to lose three points. Or to not lose three points. So, I do not want to put this into this slot because it would play into his hands because I can see what he's going for. And that kind of replicates the realities of regular players. That if um, I see, hey, nobody has actually Trap Beaver, I might want to be careful about what I'm going to play. Although, I, to a certain extent, I, I can't avoid it. Players always have the opportunity. I have a little bit more control with Hastings, though, because depending on where I play it, he may or may not get access to it. So, I don't want to put this in the right, which means I'm going to put it in the center slot or the left slot. So I know that right off the bat as part of my planning. So I've got these other ones that are going to go into the right or and or middle slot. Let's see. So, what are my other considerations? Well, another consideration is the bottom middle action. And interestingly, all three of these cards have the same one. No matter which card I put into my middle slot, I'm going to get to do a double boot action, which means I'm going to get to move my Pioneer twice up the mountain. Or alternatively, move my wagon train up to two spaces further along the progress track. So, uh, it doesn't really matter which of these three cards I put in the center. I'm going to get access to the same center action regardless. So, what the heck. Let's just go on ahead and put this beaver over here on the right. Now, you'll notice, or I'm sorry, on the left. I'm putting this into the left slot, which means it comes down like this, and this double boot is gone, but... I have created two actions for this meeple. This meeple will be able to harvest some lumber and will be able to build if I spend resources to do it by putting that there. And um, then if I say take this other one and put it over here in the right slot, as this meeple continues to go, hey, he can harvest some food and then he could build again. Although he'd have to spend two bonus resources to do it. And if I put this one in the middle, this goes underneath the other ones. Which means all of the options to get stone, boot, food, all these go away. And the only thing that's on this middle card is that double boot action. Um, and as you can see, if this is how I plan, I've given this meeple access to moving, collect food, double move, move, and lumber. And this guy, double lumber, build, double food, build. And so, I'm not saying this is my final planning, but this game is so rich ridiculously rich with possibilities every round for how you program these three cards to give you actions. This is not really a worker placement game. This is a worker travel game because these workers, I've got two of them, will be able to go from left to right and activate all these things in this particular order. And order matters because um, sometimes I might want one guy to move to get the resources I need before the other guy moves, but he's not in a position where he can move because I don't have the resources, etc, etc. You know what? What the heck? Let's just go with this. Let's say this is what I am going to do. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, I'll go with this planning, and now I am finished planning, and now I can pioneer. Which means, first of all, if I have any built cabins, which I don't, I would be able to assign one or both of these to cabins to get extra powers. Um, this guy who goes along the talk path, he can be assigned to any three of these green cabins if I built them. This guy can only be assigned to this brown cabin. And if I had the mule, the mule could be assigned to the gray cabin. So, I, I, mean, I don't have any cabins for these guys. I don't have the mules, so I can't assign them here. So I'm just going to skip that step of assigning the cabins, and then I'm going to start doing path actions. And I can do them in any order. I could have one guy go halfway along his path and then wait for the other guy to do stuff because they have to work in a concert. Let's go on ahead and have this guy start out down here at the bottom, and boom, I get two lumber. Hooray! Okay. And so I'm starting to collect some stuff. And what the heck, I'll have my top guy start going. Now, again, I could have my bottom guy go all the way before my top guy goes at all. Um, but I'll have my top guy go, and I get a single boot action. Now, a single boot action means I can use my Pioneer to move one space on the mountain. And what I'm trying to do is get up to the top so that I can claim cards uh, and build up my deck to give myself more actions. Plus, the more of these cards I claim uh, off of the mountain, the more points I have at the end of the game. So I got one boot. I could start working my way anywhere up along the mountain. 
Or instead, if I wanted to spend resources, I could start moving my overall progress uh, wagon up. This first time, I need a boot and one resource. So I could spend that first boot to go like this. Spend one of the wood I just got, and I'm on my way. Now, the reason I want to move this along is because this is a multiplier. At the end of the game, however far this is, is how many points I will get, depending on how far I go up on these progress tracks. So look, if I get all the way over here by the end of the game, I get two times the level of my rail, food, and um, legacy tracks. So like if this were up here at the end of the game, hey, that's a three. Three times two means six points. Although if I make it up here, now three times three is nine points, or four times three is 12 points. So this is a big, big focus of the game, is working your way up these tracks, but also moving your wagon along so you get those nice uh, multiplication bonuses at the end of the game. Uh, now, the other main way to score points, and there's other little things here and there, but the other main way to score points is the more of these cards you get. They're not just worth one apiece. The more of these cards you get and add to your deck, the more points they're worth. If you get three cards, that's six. If you get seven cards, that's 25. If you get nine cards, that's 35, and then five for every additional one. So this is a big portion of the game. How much of your effort, when you get boots, like I got just now, are you going to spend working your way up the mountain so you can claim these cards, which get progressively more and more valuable, versus moving your wagon forward, which unfortunately costs resources so that progress on these tracks becomes more valuable? I got to choose right now. And I think I will just start out, I'll spend that one boot and start working my way up the mountain. Okay. These guys continue to activate. He'll come over here and get me some food. Delicious. And now, boom, I've got the double boot. And I knew that double boot was coming. Although, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on. Should, hold on a second. Uh, there's so much that goes into this. If I do this double boot now, I could move my wagon once and my guy once, or I could move my guy twice, or if I could afford it, I could move my wagon twice. But I need to be thinking about what else am I going to do this round? Because once this guy moves forward, I'll have to spend a resource if I want to build. Um, and so yeah, I've got three resources now. <clears throat> so building means one of two things. Either claiming one of these mountain cards if you've got your climber on them, in which case he comes back down to the mountain and has to start climbing his way up again. Or building can mean adding one of these cabins to your board. Remember I was talking about that before I started actually going along my paths. If I had cabins, I could have activated those cabins using my guys to get special powers. And then after I got those powers, they could actually do their normal travel stuff. So I can get more use out of my two pioneers here if I get a cabin built. So... Um, and the reason I said, hold on a second, hold on a second, maybe I don't want to do this double boot just to move twice, because I'm looking. And if I get this cabin, this cabin says, whenever I land on a double boot space, um, and I can grab a double boot icon and save that for later. So that would be pretty handy. And if I were inclined to do that, I'd want to grab it before I landed here. So I'd want to have this guy move. But here's the problem. To get this... I would have to spend one double boot, which I do not have any. So I, I got to have them to make them. So, um, yeah, I think I will just go on ahead and keep on booting. I will uh, do two more. Let's see. So, wait, no, I forgot. So I've moved one. I'll move one, two. And heck, I'll just have this guy keep on going and move one more. And ah, I'm almost to the top of the mountain. That was one, two, three, four. If I had one more boot, I could make it to the top of the mountain. And then when this guy moves here, I'd be able to claim one of these cards and it'd give me access to more mining powers for the rest of the game. But I didn't quite make it to the top. And you know what? Maybe there could have been a way that I could have uh, done my planning such that I would have gotten the five boots I needed to make it all the way to the top, but that didn't quite work out. So anyway, um, I'll just keep on going. I'll get another lumber. So now i got all kinds of resources. Yeehaw! And now, the last step this guy can make, as you can see this little arrow, is to come do one of these three core actions. And, um... Oh. Oh, so this is interesting. Uh, because I could have him come over here to do this core action, which says, spend one food and two lumber, which I've got, to work my way up the rail track. And if I do that, hey, now my rail progress is potentially worth some points if I move the wagon forward. And I'd get a boot. I'd get that double boot that I needed to buy the other thing.
And I could also just use this anytime I want to move two spaces, like uh, whenever I need to. And if I don't use this, at the end of the game, I score a point for every double boot token I've got. So, do I go on ahead? And, and the interesting thing is, if I do all that, then I've got the double boot that I need to be able to buy this. Hmm. Although, unfortunately, that means I'll have it, but it'll be too late to actually use its ability because I've already long since skipped over the double boot space. Yeah. All right. Well, now that's if I want to do that, um, because this guy's made it all the way to the path, and that means he can do one of these summit actions, is what they're called. And so I, I can't do this because I don't have stone. I, I need a stone and two food to be able to work up the food track. If I did have those resources, then I can move up the food track, which would give me access to the mule. And the mule is effectively a third worker I have. The mule can activate this building, and the mule can also activate one of these special powers. So that'd be pretty cool too. But I, the mule might get taken away from me depending on what my opponent does. And finally, um, all right, oh no, I've got two foods. I do not, none of these would actually let me work my way up the, uh, I don't know what this is called, the legacy track, the tombstone track, um, which would give me gold, which is worth a point as well. And gold can be turned into wild card. It's not a wild card by default. So I got to decide which of these three things am I going to have my guy do. Now, I don't have to. I can wait because my lower guy's hardly done anything. I know he's going to collect some more food. And if somewhere along the way he were to get some gold, uh, some stone, then that means suddenly I'd have the food and stone I need to activate this one as an example. But anyway, let's go on ahead and put him on hold for a little bit. Uh, he just he made it there to get, and so now this guy's finally going to start going boop boop. And hey, he can build. But you'll notice uh, this uh, means I have to spend one of my basic resources to be able to activate. If I don't spend my resources, I can skip the action and keep going, but I'll miss out on a chance to build. Now I'll get another chance to build over here, but that would require two resources. So I better get while the getting's good. So I'm going to spend one of my resources to do a build action. And a build action could have been grab one of these cards, which I would have liked to do, except I didn't quite make it to the top of the mountain. No! Drat. Okay. So instead of that, I will choose to build one of these um, cabins. Now, they get more expensive from right to left. This one doesn't cost anything. It just took the build action, which I spent a resource to do. This one, I'd have to spend another resource to get this, uh, or another resource to get this, or a double boot to get this. I don't have a double boot, so I can't build that one. So, you know, I should probably just do this one, because, hey, it's free. I've already paid my entry. And this cabin says... For the rest of the game, as long as my um, this guy is on here, whenever I land on a space that would give me one stone, I would get two stone instead. So that's pretty cool. It can double the uh, payday on stone harvesting in later rounds. Here's the problem, though. In the mining game, it is not at all unlikely that I'll be getting stone as part of my mining operations later on. So I think... I think I'd rather pay an extra resource to get one of these two. So this one would go here, and it means this guy, at the beginning of a turn, could be placed here. And it means as long as he's here, whenever I do a build action... Or I'm, I'm sorry, not this guy, it's this guy. As long as he's here, whenever I do a build action, I will get a bonus gold out of it. And every gold is worth a point. So that's pretty cool. Or... I could get this one to go into one of my green spaces. And this says... Um, that I can give up double boot tokens to move my um, this guy who normally travels on the green track, I can move him down to the tan track. And the tan track is where the bigger stuff usually happens. And I only got one guy to go there. I could have two guys on the tan track with that one if I gave up double boots. That's really cool, but I think I'm going to go for the other one. So, I uh, spent my resource to do this action. And then I spent another resource to build this. And now, in round two, I will have access to this. That building will be a more profitable venture for me if I can time the use of these guys correctly. Anyway, so he keeps on going. And I get some more food. Hooray! Hooray! And I'm going to need that food because now I've come here where, if I want to, I can give up two resources. Oh, wait, oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry, I forgot. As soon as I built a cabin, if the it, whenever anybody builds a cabin, if they don't build the rightmost one, it is immediately removed from the game, and then other ones slide down, and new ones come out. Okay. And so now I've made it over here, and hey, I've got two resources. I could build another cabin. I can't get another card because I'm not up there. So I could get that double boot now. <gasps> oh. Oh. 
Ooh, I love this one. This is a green cabin. You can see I have up to three green cabins, but I can only activate one green cabin per round because I've only got one guy, this guy, who can go on the green cabins. If this guy lands here, it's like he's activated all of the green cabins. Ooh, that is nice. Nice, nice, nice. But wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, okay, so I could, because I could uh, spend the two resources to do this, and I could spend one more to get this or this, or I could get that one for free. But again, I don't have any double boots, so I can't get this one. This one, um, this would cost me a double boot. And if I spend two double boots, which is throwing two points away, I can basically have my green path guy go back one step so he can do an, an action a second time, which is also incredibly cool. Um, yeah, I will go on ahead and spend two more. And then I'll spend one more resource to... I, I, I think I like this one. This one. Ugh! Well, this one might not go away. Well, actually, here's the thing. Um, There is a chance, because if I'm looking ahead to what Hastings is going to do, Hastings has two opportunities to build. He's going to do them once. And if he builds uh, a cabin, he'll want to take the rightmost one. If I take this, this will go away. This will slide all the way over, and Hastings will likely, I can't be certain, but he will likely get it. It's possible he'll take a card instead, because if he can, he'd rather do a card. Mm. So, but I don't want this right now, because it's not going to do any... I mean, getting this doesn't do me any good until I've got other green... Okay, I, I got to do it. It's just too cool. I'm going to take that one. Okay, and because I took, I didn't take the rightmost one, the rightmost one is removed from the game. They slide over. New ones come out, and this one it increases your wood harvest. And this one... Oh, it's another one of those move backwards, double... So there's two of those on the board. Okay. So, that was that, and now both of my guys are ready, are waiting to be to, in the queue to jump up here to do these actions. But look at this! What happened to all my resources? I've Now I've only got one piece of wood left! Where did my double wood and food go so I could come over here? So I could work my way up the track so I could get that boot! Oh no! I have bankrupted myself. And so, unfortunately, even though both of my guys could keep going to activate two of these three special powers... I'm gonna have to pass because I didn't manage my resources. Now, don't don't cry for me. I got two cabins built. That is the equivalent of making six points because if I didn't build these two, that's negative three and negative three at the end of the game. So I scored six points and next round, I'm gonna have access to some cool special powers as well. Um, but I had to, uh, but to get those, I had to pass on these, which means I passed on these, which would give me resources and potentially give me combo points at the end of the game. Right. But hey, I got points there. My turn is over. Now, when you're playing the solo game, um, before your turn is over, when you pass, you have to do an extra step. Check to see if Hastings is going to go hunting. And remember, Hastings uh, was looking for beaver in the right slot. In the right slot, I put a hare, and therefore, uh, he does not go hunting. He does not get rid of that negative three thing. So, no hunting for Hastings, and my turn is over. These all go... These guys reset. These cards go into my discard pile. They'll show up again later in the game. And at the end of my turn, I can draw my next three cards and start planning. What am I going to do? Oh, I got my mining opportunity uh, in the next, going into the second round. So I can be planning for this while other players are going. But uh, we're not having other players go. We're going to have Hastings go. And the way he goes is he has... This is his current plan. He draws another card to indicate what's he going to do on his plan. And this card says... He is skipping the first action and doing this action, this action, this action. Oh, okay. So, what, okay, so he's going to do these things in this order. First, he's skipping this. Although, if he had the mule, he would do all four actions. Although the mule action is always the final thing he does. <clears throat> so, he is first of all going to skip this opportunity to build. Which uh, means, if he had done that one... He would have built the rightmost. He would have taken this. Uh, he, the, he never uses the special powers. These are just worth points to him at the end of the game. But he didn't. He skipped on that. He is going to go climbing. Now, what that means is human players only have one climber. Um, but Hastings has two, a left and a right climber. So this says, activate your right climber. And basically, he just always jumps to the top most available face-up card. So, boom, Hastings found the five movement he needed to do to make it to the top. I didn't make it, he did. Okay, and now, 
uh, Hastings is going to work his way up the rail track. Well, again, which is something I could have done, but I didn't because I focused on other things. Hastings will start working his way up there. And um, he, for doing this, gets a double boot. He never uses these. These are just worth points to him at the end of the game. Um, but here's the thing. During another player's turn, I could uh, go tracking, which means I gain a resource after another player moves on a homestead track. Hastings just moved on a homestead track, which means if I want to activate one of my two guys, I could get one lumber. And all I got to do is activate one of the guys by putting him in this tracking space. But here's the thing. If I do that, that means they're locked up and will not be able to activate our, either of my new cabins. So I don't want to lock this guy up in tracking or trapping because I want him to be able to use my building bonus cabin next turn. But this guy, hey, I don't mind locking him up because he's not going to do much anyway with the... Uh, with this, because hey, he could do this to activate other cabins that don't exist. So I've got an interesting choice here. I don't want to, I mean, I could use both of these guys, one of them to track, which is what I'm talking about, and also one of them to trap Beaver, which would score me three points. So if I send this guy here, he will track, which means I get uh, a, uh, a, an extra lumber. So I've got more resources in the next round. Or I could send him over here, which means, and there's a reminder, I have to pay this lumber to trap Beaver because uh, that's what Hastings did. And I can see this is coming up for um, his second round that I'd be able to piggyback off of that. So do I want to do that? Because that means trapping becomes a more valuable resource for me later in the game. Let's see, actually, what am I planning for in my next round? Um, okay, I did. This card gives me the opportunity to trap, which means if I flip this and then I do this action, I'll be able to get a, a, a lumber resource off of this action. And I get it, I get rid of a negative three noose around my neck. I'm effectively scoring three points by flipping that, and I'll be able to generate more lumber if I tra trap instead of track. I think I'm going to do that because this is just a one... I mean, I could use the guy and not spend any resources to get a temporary bonus, but instead I'm going to send the guy over here to trap the beaver. I had to spend my last bit of resources, so it's a good thing I saved some resources. Because remember, I could have used all my resources on those final actions, but I saved them up. Um, I had one left, so I could do this, and now um, fur trapping is going to be a lucrative option for me. And I could still use this guy over here to get that lumber back. Heck, I could have used this guy to get the lumber that this guy could have used to do the trapping as an example. But then both of these guys would be tied up, which means they can still do their path actions, but they won't be able to do a cabin action. And i got to ask myself, while this is great because, hey, every time I do a build action, I get gold for free. It's like an extra point. Am I going to build? Only one of my three cards actually gives me the opportunity to build when I after I plan next turn. So am I going to be building? I think so. I think I am still going to do it. So... I am going to skip on tracking. I will trap. So this guy's available. So uh, for the... Oh! No. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. So we'll go with that. We'll go with that. All right. So Hastings is done. And, you know, if Hastings had been a human player, Hastings would have played three cards, done the whole path thing. I would have been waiting um, to see what paths he went up so that I could have potentially tracked. I could have trapped, etc., etc. But as is, Hastings is done. This slides away. This becomes his plan for the next round. So I can see in, at, on his second turn, he's potentially going to try and do trapping, although it won't benefit him at all because I haven't given him any. He will potentially try to build. He will potentially try to move his wagon forward because he's trying to score the multipliers just like I am. And he will potentially activate his special mode card. Depending on which mode you play, in a case I'm playing the mining one, he can do a lot of mining actions. Instead, you know, he could have done fishing actions or sheriff actions, depending on which mode we were playing. So I know next round, there's a chance... There's a 75% chance he is going to activate his special power and be the first to do any kind of big, uh, big mining operations. But anyway, so that's it for him. It is now my second turn, and I've got to start planning again. And this is my opportunity. If I spend three resources to get a mine cart, which doesn't do anything by itself. There's a finite number of these, but every mine cart I have can be loaded with gold nuggets Gold nuggets in the game are normally worth one point at the end of the game, but they can instead be worth three, and you can load up to two of them on one of these minecarts. 
And uh, gold is an easier resource to get in this game um, because we can go digging for... I could go mining this turn, which means I could potentially get two gold, although there's a chance some of that gold might turn out to be stone. Um, and the more of these cards I grab into my deck, the more opportunities I have to do mining, etc., etc. So, I gotta figure out what is my plan going into my second turn. And if you'd like to find out, you can hit that eye up in the top right corner of the screen to go to the extended playthrough, or instead you can go straight to final thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three... Two, one.